I do not get their choices of, of when to protect themselves or not. Or Yeah, know. that part was... I don't know. I, for, I can only imagine for some reason they were just probably scared to point that pitchfork pitch <laughs> at people on set. It's They're like, real- fuck it. What should we do? Give them a candle. <laughs> that won't make any sense. How is he going to defend himself? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We don't, no, have, we don't have insurance hurt. on Linda Blair. We can't be throwing pitchforks around. <laughs> we'll be in it real deep. <laughs> Hey there, boils and ghouls. It's this week's episode of Hollow Weekly. Nick Rollins. George Ailey. And uh, we went, we started the series, How Low Can We Go? And we just went a little bit, a little bit lower. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we, it's, there's, no way, there's no way to not make that title sound dirty, but <laughs> it's getting, it's going to get dirty. We're headed to the basement, We're which is to, fitting considering the movie we just watched. The Grundle of Ron <laughs> Tomatoes. <laughs> That's where we're headed. Yes. And you're all coming along with us. Congratulations oh. as we head to zero rated horror movies on Ron Tomatoes. It's going to start to stank. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's our, our premise is it's not. We're going to find good shit all the way down. I'm determined. Well, it can, I can enjoy it and it can be a little stinky. Sure. It's like a fart, your own fart. <laughs> totally. You ain't mad about it. No, you're, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so, so last time we, we started off at 59% to 58 with Scream 4 and Psycho 3. And Psycho 3. So now we're at 57 and 56 with 57 being hell night yes with a parent scream queen yes <laughs> uh, linda, legendary scream queen linda blair <laughs> linda blair not, she's not a scream queen in my eyes but she's she's i but to be fair i've only seen hell night and exorcist so right doesn't matter and then 56 for some reason why i don't know the Horror action film because those can both <laughs> exist. They can't. It can't. It doesn't have to be just action or just horror. The Mummy in 1999 with Brendan Fraser. Uh, isn't that her name? Rachel. Rachel Weiss. Yeah. Weiss. Yeah. Yep. Uh, who I was real sad they replaced in the third one. You're mm-hmm. not fooling me. No. <laughs> so, anyways, we just got. We actually just got done watching um, Hell Night. Yes. So here, here's the exciting part for me. Like, as we talked about before, we're watching movies that we hadn't seen before. I think I saw part of Hell Knight as a kid, but I don't remember it. I had never even right. heard and of And I it. had never seen The Mummy from 99. So these were both new to me. Yeah. And we've moved out of sequel area, right? So where Hell Knight was original Mummies. Re- I mean, well, that's not really a reboot. Just more of Universal being like, "Hey, we got this, <laughs> we got totally. this uh, item here. We should probably remake it." <laughs> right, and they're doing it again. And they're doing it again. All right, so Hell Knight. First of all, when you look up Hell Knight, uh, you you linked me an article before watching it. Uh, I forget for who it was from, but it was basically saying like it was one of the most underrated films, which is true because even when you when I googled it, it just like it didn't look like there was any like clean copies of it you know what i mean like it was totally. it all looked like super like blurry old 80s footage yep and even the trailers for it kind of sucked so i was like i don't even know how excited i am sure to watch this and the trailer it was like one of those cheesy 80s trailers so you don't even get anything from that yep but that article's right it's totally fucking underrated yeah i, I was it. scared heading into it because i was like oh my god if we're hitting crap movies this high up we're gonna we're gonna die uh-huh. by, by the time we get down to like 10, 15 percent. And I was waiting for it to be. I go into yeah. all of these thinking that they're gonna be bad. Yep. I mean, even though even though we watch them because we're pointing out how great they are, right. it's still kind of well, hard. Hoping, right? Yeah, it's still yeah. kind of hard to see a trailer for Hell and I and be like, oh god, yeah. <laughs> we gotta go through this one. But I think we both loved it. It's not a perfect movie, but it was There's really a lot, fun. There was a there's like your typical flaws with it that comes with a bad film. Yes, it's it's I, like so you I, had you had let's 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 go chronologically. Okay. You had the perfect description for it. You combined two movie names. Yeah. So basically, to sell you on the film, to get you actually into it, this will be better than anything you Google because the trailers suck. This is basically Last House or uh, uh, House on Haunted Hill plus Wrong Turn. So Last House on Wrong Turn <laughs> Hill. <laughs> exactly. That's what the movie is. Right. If that doesn't convince you to go see it, nothing will. Yeah. Totally. Uh, but yeah, it's basically. <clears throat> so many spoilers if you haven't seen it. They're, yeah, they're the wrong turn <laughs> element is obviously that there are 
the setup is that the, to enter this sorority fraternity, these kids, once a year on Hell Night, the pledges have to spend a night in a theoretically haunted house where a guy killed himself and his family. Yeah, because they were having some ugly kids. Yeah, yo, that's right. It was a uh, shit show. Of, yeah, yeah, he just didn't like any of the kids. He's, well, and they also all came out half-baked or whatever. So, like, <laughs> yeah. like, so it was right. So so this house is haunted, and they're spending... So the house is the best character in this movie, right? Yeah, it, it feels like like a legit... Like, when you think of, like, generic haunted house film, like, that's that's the house. Like, that's what you're picturing in your head. Yep. You haven't even seen the film, and that's what you're... That's the house. Totally. But what happened was, so the thing that the thing that I liked is while we were watching it, like Nick and I made a bet. So you got the pledges in the house, and then you have the people who put them in the house lurking around the house trying to scare them. Mm-hmm. And we placed bets on who was going, which team was going to die first. Yeah, which was we were one hundred percent. We called it, <laughs> we, which was pretty. It's not that hard to call. No, no, it's not that hard, especially since they were less likable than the characters they had in the in yeah. the actual house. But. Um, you have this kind of cool juxtaposition of the fake scares mm-hmm. uh, up against the real scares, right? Yeah. Which I liked because you have people who are amateur hour trying to do scares with like skeletons and closets and like... When you're actually in a house with like three <laughs> fucking psycho looking crazy people. Right, exactly. And Nick and I were wondering while we were watching this because I thought this was just the funniest prospect ever because the wrong turn group, they definitely live in this house. So it makes you wonder if they're like walking around running into fake scares themselves <laughs> throughout the day. God like, damn it. Someone, <laughs> someone put a skeleton in my closet. Someone put a, <laughs> which is, which is great. Um, but so the four characters you get, the main characters you get introduced with, you have the fun couple. Yep. And then you have the straight laced couple, mm-hmm. right? And the fun couple have fun. Straight laced couple. Put us to up sleep. Some laces. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the, the, I mean, they were boring as shit. Like when they they weren't yeah. even like really connecting. It seemed, and then they kind of connected later. But it was, oh era, yeah. My, yeah, it was it was uh, they they talked a little long. That was kind of painful. But um, then you head into the part where the the people lurking around get are getting picked off, and then um, what's kind of cool is you have this this switch over. Where the characters in the house are hearing real bad things happen and thinking that they're fake mm-hmm. things, right? Which is always like a device that I like. Yeah. Because they, they, because then they have no legit reason to be concerned. They're like, oh, they're just fucking with us again. Exactly. So let's point out how bad they were at actually doing the fake scares. This was terrible. This oh. was like the worst. Uh, you, you, I mean, imagine the worst haunted house you've ever gone to in the smallest town you've ever yeah. been. Minus. A thousand percent. It was, it was pretty bad. Pretty pitiful attempt yeah. to scare us, right? Um, Which sucks because that guy who set it all up told the story. That that's what I that was my favorite parts about the actual like script of the of the film was how they gave the whole backstory of the mansion. It was like you were on this guided tour with the guy. He was mm-hmm. telling the story like poetically like really yeah <laughs> really be like really beautifully um and you were the camera was moving like you were walking closer and closer to the house while he was yeah, yeah yeah so the shot was cool yeah it was like you were walking up to it that part was pretty fucking dope which you wouldn't mm-hmm. have expected from the way this fucking movie started i mean you even missed the first 20 seconds it's like a girl just screaming bloody murder <laughs> and alex and jenny were sitting here and i was in the other room and i started and it scared both of them <laughs> well that's S- score one hell night score one hell night <laughs> <laughs> um, so there were some really creepy, really effective shots. And I think that yeah. was like some of the best. It wasn't jump scares, really. But all the jump scares were like bl- like super fucking obvious when they were going to happen. Yeah. Because the character is like on the like the edge of the frame and you're like, a hand's going like, to grab them and pull them in. Right. Well, there shit. was jump scare that w- there was a couple. There was a jump scare that was not obvious, but I don't think it moved fast enough to really be a jump scare. It's when they were sitting in the bedroom in the carpet started to move that part was really fucking good that was really good that was probably like the coolest like you would like it was such a dope fucking moment from that film Mm -hmm. which you wouldn't have thought would have been in there because all the other shitty jump scares (laughs) but like they pulled that one off and it was like like watch that movie for that one scene yep like yeah. if you're gonna watch one part, it's like actually fucking like kind of scary. There's a, there's a so there's a few shots like you mentioned. Yeah, if you were doing like the Bravo's hundred scariest moments countdown, and that one showed up in it, I wouldn't be mad. Like I'd be like that, you know, that deserves. That I was, wouldn't even be mad that they mentioned that movie on that list. Right. That right now because there was the other shots. So like the monsters, like you only see like a silhouette of them. 
most of the part, most yep. of the time, or in like super heavy shadow, and you're not even seeing them. Yep. But there's a, the, the the other scene is when they're getting chased in the tunnel. It looks back, and like it's it's scary because his fucking hairs are like flying off. So like it just makes him look even like more fucking nuts out. Totally. But no, that scene was really scary. It remind and. I'll be damned if the people from Wrong Turn ever ever hear this and say this movie had no influence because <laughs> that's a goddamn lie. You saw it somewhere. <laughs> well, actually, what's real? What was really cool was so I could not stop laughing because it, it was it was the the horror movie moment of don't go don't go in there on steroids, right? Because yeah. it was like a ten minute journey. Like they found a secret passageway from the room they were hiding in, the the good characters, and then they decided they were going to go down into it, and then they traveled to the center of the earth. Like, <laughs> and their plan was we got to go get this guy who's who's stalking us because he knows the house. And we gotta we gotta put a stop to him while he's wounded. And as soon as they encounter him, they scream and run away. They take off. They're like, "Fuck that! That plan, <laughs> that plan was never gonna work." <laughs> it was a horrible plan, right? Which was kind of the most ridiculous, you know. Change How of- funny would have been though if they look and they see the hatch, and then they just close it and go, "Well, that was scary." <laughs> <laughs> That's what they should have done. That's what right? I would have done. They- I would just want to saddle the, the fucking <laughs> door so we couldn't open it. But there's a great there's a great moment when they're in the tunnel and they get. The movie has did actually did a really good job of showing you things to the side and you were like, Did I just see that? Mm-hmm. Like there'd be a figure moving in the shadow or something going running going yeah. by really fast. And you were like, Did I wait, is there something there? Like it yeah. was it was good that how they did that. Which made it more effective when they froze on the guy in the center of the tunnel and you got your first real face to face look. Yeah. Because the movie has been was dodging it the whole time, and then it gave it to you. But there's a great there, moment in the movie Third Man, where he gets framed by a sudden shaft of light, and this I'll be damned if this didn't look kind of like that. Which is yeah. that's I mean if they're referencing like classic movies like that, that's they're above their pay grade. Yeah, like, yeah. The 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 they look. Uh, a lot better in the dark because when you get the full shot of the guy yeah. at the end, it just looks like well, yeah, looks like they just didn't try that day. <laughs> just like fuck it, we don't have the budget. <laughs> we just, we're just gonna go with this clown that's, makeup. <laughs> that's that's very and figure true. Figure it out. The uh, <laughs> the one thing I liked was that it was the movie was pretty funny because of the silly couple, like the the cut loose couple. Uh, yeah, because it was like a like a some kind of foreign girl who had a bunch of quaaludes and alcohol, and then the other guy was like a party surfer like 80s dude mm-hmm. and oh, there there's so much like funny shit in that he film. was great yeah like i i'll never i think i'll i i went i need to make my friends in ohio watch this the friends of i think harley talked like i because i know they would love that fucking moment when she walks out what she calls him like steven and he goes Man, what's he say so they, they, like they literally were just making out they're they, connect, they, connecting they, 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 they went into the and the then they room. run down the stairs and then and then she she the couples are conferring and they're all and naked because they heard a scream right right, right exactly and she turns to him and she goes steven that's not right he's like my name is Seth, darling. <laughs> <laughs> but he says it like... The way he did it was perfect. He says darling, like darling, like as if they're an item. <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes so much of the movie. And then he goes on a whole... He goes... He enters a separate film. He goes, he he goes on his own version of The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> except, except he goes to the volcano and then runs back to the Shire. <laughs> way to describe it that's exactly what happens this guy he escapes the house gets by the the climbs over the gate that you would try the to razor kill, blade the razor blade gate. gate right and he runs for help and then everywhere he goes everyone ignores him the police blow him off so then he does almost like a terminator move he like raids the police arsenal <laughs> weaponry yeah. in the loads up the shotgun loads up the shotgun and then goes and like heroically goes back to save his friends Knocks out or kills one of the the dudes. Kills him like three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And then for some reason fishes him out of the water. That part was weird. I don't there's a lot of there is that's it's the little things like that that put the film where it is today. But that's that's fine. But right. no, he was he was he was my favorite fucking character film. The main main guy. Mm-hmm. To be honest, even Linda Blair, who they obviously like, she's a great actress. Like, mm-hmm. I, like she, yeah, she had her moments, and there were some scenes where I liked her. But I, her, overall, her, her, her the character main guy. was so ineffective. Yeah, not her fault. That's the writers. 
Right. I say that like she's going to call me and be like, <laughs> Nick, can we talk about that movie I did in 1980? <laughs> no, they were fucking boring. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't care for them at all. Can we talk about the weapon f- choice yeah. flaws so, in this film? Clearly all the flaws so far are, well, it's on the director writer. And while we're at it, we got to talk to this writer about what happens if, if someone <laughs> invades his house. What are you going to attack them with? I want to invade his house. Because if he wrote this movie, they, he got no chance against me. Yeah, we could go in there and rearrange we, his furniture, and he wouldn't stop. He would, he would come out as well. Hey, okay, so basically, let's just cut the chase. Yes. The fucking main character, and this bugged the shit out of George, I could tell, because every time he fucking grabs something, you were, he just you just <laughs> called him out of having a He never so he, he's the only reason you ever see him with an actual weapon in the film is it's is only because he gave up the can or because the candle went out on him. Mm-hmm. He's always using a fucking candle or a right. flashlight. So like early on in the movie when they figure out the scares are real, that 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 they're being stalked and that people are actually dying. The next 20 minutes of the film, I swear to god, the main character and Linda Blair wander around the house looking for their friends trying to figure out if they're dead or not and they have never at any moment armed themselves. They're walking around with a fucking candle. And there, it's a house, it's a creepy house with like fire pokers and like, then they just are walking around with a candle. So then the guy goes out into the woods to go explore the noises to see if it was, you know, his friends possibly still alive out there. And he's walking around with a motherfucking candle again. And then the, a wind gust comes by and blows the candle out and he drops the candle and goes, huh? And then looks down <laughs> and he sees a pitch bar and goes, all right, I'll pick that up now. You've been unarmed for the one third of this movie for no apparent reason. And then my favorite part, twist on this, is he's then he's then he stabs someone with the pitchfork. The pitchfork's in the person on the ground, and he grabs a flashlight and he starts creeping towards the body, holding the flashlight up like a fucking club when the pitchfork is right there, right? This guy thinks light is weapons. Like he thinks if you handed him a, a book of matches, he'd be feel i would be fine. He's like, be like I'm, I'm Hades. <laughs> I do not get their choices of, of when to protect themselves or not. Or yeah, know. that part was I don't know. I I could only imagine for some reason they were just probably scared to point that pitchfork pitchfork on people, <laughs> people on set. It's They're like, real. fuck it, what should we do? Give him a candle. <laughs> <laughs> That won't make any sense. How is he going to defend himself? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We don't, have, we don't have to make hurt. sure it's a Linda Blair. We can't be throwing pitchforks around. <laughs> we'll be in it real deep. <laughs> that has to be the answer. That's that's got to be. To me, I wrote this. Down, I, I thought about this during the movie, but then I was like, this probably doesn't make any sense. This movie feels like it feels like a B movie showed up for class and then got an A on a project and went, what? <laughs> how, how that, <laughs> That's a great way to put it. <laughs> how'd that happen? That's a great way to put it. Because it has all the cheesy fuck, it has all of like the, the, the things you'd see like mystery science theater, like all like the level, like level of like kind of cheesiness, but it's like fun. I think it's because there's so much like the house is like the haunt, like the haunted house mm-hmm. aspect. I think that kind of gives the movie like a campiness that makes it like palatable. So yep. it's not like you're just torturing yourself yourself with a bad, yep, bad film. Yep. No, I th- I thought it was I thought it was really effective in a lot of parts. And then I actually liked the end. I liked the callback to her her mechanical skill with cars. Right? <laughs> they had to put that in. There. They had to put that in there. And then I just like w- how they use the gate and like that that last shot was. You know, you think of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre with with uh, Marilyn running away and, and like him in anger spinning around, whatever this ending was so still. <laughs> yeah. Like it was literally almost like a kind of horror painting. Mm-hmm. They were like, they just put it the way they wanted it and they just shot, kept it on that. Like, you know, and you pointed out two things in the film, which I, I'm sure has happened in other slasher films. Cause it is a slasher. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, the film gave us a, Horror movie where a man dies wearing a fake bird on his shoulder. <laughs> Never seen that before. And two, uh, gives us a car fix mid chase. <laughs> yes, totally. She had to get out. Just look. She had to get out. <laughs> and you know, there's actually a great car repair moment in Scout's Guide to the Apocalypse, mm-hmm. Zombie Apocalypse. Yeah. Um, 
which is which is even funnier than this one. But it just feels all out of place when movies do it. But it was whatever they had to do it. They wrote it. Yeah, in. Yeah, and so. it was great. It made you know <laughs> she brought it up. It, and well, they it gave it her like some strength that she didn't really possess because it, it was actually went against the grain of her character. She didn't yeah. seem like someone who could fix cars for most of the movie. You know what I mean? It's just something they kind of wrote in. But yeah, but I like how they framed the end. I like how they I like how they had her just walk away from like the carnage and the chaos, and that was just that was it. End of end of movie. I think it's better than fifty. Seven percent. Yeah, what, is what I'm saying. I do too, and I, and I agree. I I do think it's one of the you know. There's so many articles where people are like, "This horror film is underrated." Mm-hmm. No, this is this is probably like the, like an actual underrated. <laughs> yes, because exactly. most of the ones you see that are on those lists are fake. This is an actual underrated film. That's that's good. And now that we go down to fifty six percent. Uh, I disagree with that number right off the bat fucking <laughs> yes. immediately. Yes, you're totally going to. Um, By the way, before we jump, I just wanted to say the guy who produced Hell Knight produced Halloween, uh, I can't, his, his name is hard to pronounce, like Erwin LeBlanc or something. He's really influential in the horror fear. And, and I found a quote when he was talking about Hell Knight that I really liked. He said, there's a visceral response to horror. If I invite a bunch of people over and we're sitting around and I tell a joke... One person may laugh, one may be offended, a third might not find it not funny. But if somebody runs in with a horrible mask on and starts to scream, everyone jumps and runs out of the room. He's like, horror has a way of being effective that's particular to the horror field. And I felt this movie did this. This movie, like, the Hell Knight actually unsettled me at the parts that it probably should have. Yeah. So I'm good with it. All right. I thought his quote was going to be, <laughs> yeah, I tell a joke. <laughs> Something, something, something. I kill someone. <laughs> Everyone freaks out. <laughs> I tell a joke and then I say, darling, my man is Seth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 56%. Yes. Let's just shoot him at, shoot it at him fast. The fucking mummy. <laughs> That's the title. The, the. fucking <laughs> mummy with <laughs> Brendan fucking Frazier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why is that at 56%? Okay, listen. The only reason I can see that being 56% or for, is is just a bunch of fucking douchebag fucking critics in the late nineties who are probably just mad at their lives. It's a great fucking movie. I don't get. It. I just don't get it. I'm so I, I can't even think of. I, it's the fucking mummy. <laughs> All right. So right. I'm okay. The, so let's start from the beginning of the film. No, well, this no, is no. Actually, everyone's this is the first seen time. this movie. No, you just now saw the film. I'm you, the you, last person on earth who has not seen. So. The movie first reaction to it was this is a whole hell of a lot of fun right mm-hmm. and it was it was literally i didn't i actually didn't expect to enjoy the whole imhotep arc of the story as much as i did having seen the trailers and heard people talk about it i expected kind of like you know action with some dark elements kind of a la tomb raider yeah. and that it was going to be really focused on brendan Fraser's character but you spend some time with imhotep and I thought the actor was really, really good. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought he gave character. There were moments where he was he was re- wreaking havoc on people by raising his priests or calling up sandstorms. And he had this evil glint in his eye like he was really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he really sold that, you know, which I thought really that kind of made it uh, a more interesting I knew it was going to be fun, and I knew it was going to be like a ride, but I didn't expect to kind of get that into that side of the story. So I really mm-hmm. liked that. And then the other thing that's it's kind Benny. of obvious to me, right? <laughs> the other thing that's kind of obvious to me is there are some there are some fears that I have in life. I don't like heights a hell of a lot, right? Same. Um, buried alive, not a fan. And when they mummify him alive, dude, yeah. And then bury him in scarabs and those like, scarabs. That was, I saw that as a kid. That, that fucked me up. I, I know, like I know, I'm watching a horror <laughs> action comedy, but that was not, I was like, that is a bad way to go. And yeah. that's a I, visualizing it was not a, a, not a good time, right? So like, mm-hmm. I thought they really executed that part of it. And like, the like, effects actually. Do you think the effects still hold up? Some of them. Some of them. Some of them do. Some. Of but them even don't. the the CGI with the bug one through the arm, even yeah. though it doesn't look as good, it still makes you feel. Well, see, but that's the thing is there was an uncomfortable edge to that one. Like he, he's got the bug in his arm and then Brendan Fraser pulls out the knife. Like he's going to dig like, it out. And I'm like, oh God, that like, uh, that's not, you know, right. Exactly. So I really actually liked that part of it. And I had a lot of fun with it. I have a question about the end because I, I don't think I was paying enough attention to really figure out 
what transpired at the very end. But before we get to the end of it, you go way back with this movie. This was actually so, one of the first. So, like, you know how, like, when you're a kid, you have one movie that you go, you watch over and over and over again. Yeah. I remember, like, the time in my life where, like, The Mummy was that film. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, I, I would be really fucking freaked out to like jump like i had a bunk bed and the movie we movie would be over i'd freak out because i'd have to jump down and i was always scared as soon as i jumped down the fucking um where they priest the ones he right he brings back from the dead yep those guys scared the fuck out of me those yep. those were this because i hate being chased and all they do in that whole scene is uh, chase down the two the totally. two people yep. so those guys fucked me up so first of all how can you see those guys and say it's not a horror film i'm bringing it back to that <laughs> <laughs> i don't fucking get it but that well, and i actually really like the scene where they when they the way they locked the coffin that they put Imhotep in they had like that special key key yeah, that yeah, spins yeah. it and like whatever and it was just the design was really cool it was super cool yeah. but but it's also a fun action film like totally like o'connell it's o'connell right o'connell or connor i don't remember fucking brandon fraser yeah uh his character is super fucking cool like yes. he's like he's like he's like the coolest fucking action hero mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah so like you have that part and the comedy in it too um the the person who i didn't like as a kid but when i rewatched it when i got a little bit older i realized how much I loved Benny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I just love him. And that's the other thing. The fucking villain has like a whiny fucking henchman. <laughs> oh, who else? Who else had something like that? Right. Fucking Frankenstein. <laughs> um, right? I'm yeah. so mad at that. It uh, doesn't fine. matter. We're good. Um, no, but I fucking, I even liked the, be, uh, the beginning with uh, Nuts on the Moon, bringing her back. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback Thursday. I actually thought that whole sequence was really cool. It I, was shot really fucking really, well. That holds up really well. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of the sound that they make when they're stabbing her father mm-hmm. yeah. and then her always kind of got me too. Yeah, totally. And they're just like the kind of creepiness of the priests. They were creepy when they were alive, let alone when he raised them they back were dead. from the they dead. They were scary as fuck. But but I actually thought that whole sequence, I was really digging that sequence. I was really into that part. I was like, I'm going to like this movie more than I even thought I was going to. Um, the end, it looks like he kind of voluntarily throws himself into the river. Did I miss something? Imhotep is hanging on, and so is Brendan Fraser. And then Brendan Fraser gets out, and then he... Let's go. It looks like he lets go on purpose. I I remember the ending. I think he does. Because at that point... Because uh, I think she abandons she, him, right? She's done at that point. So I think he's just like, I'm, never mind. Yeah. I'm good. And there's a... I haven't seen it, but there's a Mummy Returns that I'm assuming is the same characters. He comes back too. In fact, him and uh, uh, O'Connell end up fighting together against... the. That's the famously bad Scorpion King CGI. Oh. Uh, that's, okay. that's, that's what that is. Okay. Got it. <laughs> But that's a great movie. In fact, the uh, not to venture to go too far into the to the the Mummy Returns has like a super fucking dope. Uh, have you, you haven't seen that one, right? Mm. Um, it begins in like a uh, they're back in uh, in London and they're in this like big British museum and then someone comes in and then somehow brings the Imhotep back and there's like all these mummies come to life in the fucking uh, oh no their henchmen come do something and then there's a big fight but anyways they're on like a big double decker bus and mummies are like oh, <laughs> on top cool. of the claw and there's a big action scene cool so the, the, the priests come back again they're fucking great <laughs> <laughs> cool. but no the um no the first one yeah the, i think he just kind of says fucking and gives it up but the, what's cool the scene i liked before that is when him and the guy from the other like egyptian army mm-hmm. he, it's like an egyptian like mm-hmm. underground thing, uh is the scene of the mummies when they're like in the room with their guns yep. and they you just see the fucking the music the sound they make that croaking sound yep. the way they move but the, the, like you, they see the shadows coming that I remember freaking the fuck out. Yeah. Like, that was a super fucking cool... That was well shot. I mm-hmm. love... That whole scene's cool, and the way they're blasting zombies. Because mm-hmm. even if you say, like, you really love, like, Boris Karloff's The Mummy, right. when you think about mummies, you're thinking about, like, zombie-like type mummies coming after you and blasting those fuckers away, and the mummy's <laughs> like, here you go. The shit you always imagine doing in a horror film. Yeah. We're going to put two action heroes in it and, and show you what happens. Right. It's so, such a fun fucking so, movie. Yeah, it, re- it really was. It was... Did you... Good. Did you like the... Uh, Imhotep uh, regenerating. Did you like yes. how they do that? Because that was yes. really that was more horror shit. Totally, totally. And yeah, and I thought that was really cool when I was figuring out what they were doing and how that was happening. It's sort of similar to what they do in Underworld, right? Where they yeah. resurrect the elder and then he his physical appearance changes. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and I just thought that was cool. But I mean, I was just glad to, they, they just, the, the actor had so much charisma and he was really selling it. He never acted like he thought he was in a comedy. Yeah. You know, he didn't Brandon play this guy, right? No, the, the Imitep, the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he acted it straight, you know, and he did just a really, really good job. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was thought it was, it, it's definitely better than 56%. So like, <laughs> and even, just, uh, um, I forget what's her name. Uh, the 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 female lead's name. Uh, I can't remember her character name. God. Uh, well, anyways, she's fucking phenomenal, and the the guy that plays her brother mm-hmm. is fucking great. Totally, it's a great cast all around. Honestly. Yeah, it's 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 just super fucking well done. I, the the scene that fucked me up when I was really young, other than the whole movie, for, <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> is when is when Imhotep takes the guy's uh, tongue and eyes. Yes, that scene was fucked up. I know. Like, I just, I loved, like, that part in the middle where he's, like, just, like, regenerating, just, like, slowly fucking with people. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, I love that and, part. And, I mean, it's got that, and it is funny, too. I mean, they're literally, the the part where the troops are closing in on Brendan Fraser, and he just, like, closes his eyes, <laughs> waiting to get shot. <laughs> like, he's just like, Joe, okay, do it. <laughs> like, whatever was just, he he's really good at that. Like, mm-hmm. that's his talent. Like, as a as an actor, you know, he's, he's, that's he's excellent at that. He even played some things for laughs in Gods and Monsters, which is a, a great movie that is underseen. But but he's got the same. You, he was doing the same style here, and he's just yeah. You can tell that that's why you hire him. That's what he's there for. All the all the like the other minor characters who were just there to die. Even those people <laughs> were fucking great. Like the the like the American guys. The one guy. Uh, Telling the like the slave labor dudes to like work faster, work faster, then they got it. Like yep. all, even all those people who you don't give a shit about were fucking great in that movie. Yeah, those sequences were really cool. I mean, that's the there was no boring parts in between. I don't think. No, and you know there. I mean, I get there are like you know the opening of The Exorcist. That whole Iraq sequence is really really creepy, and this wasn't going for that creep creepy factor like that big that much because it was mm-hmm. it was doing other things at the same time but yeah. but i was okay with i'm like you know a movie with well, this movie knew what it wanted to do it did it right yeah it did it really well but it didn't leave behind the 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 the, the idea of making sure that the other darker elements stayed in you know which yeah. is totally fine and we're, we're still in no pain zone because i've enjoyed both the movies we watched as we're as we're heading down, so yeah, I I <laughs> totally good. I liked I liked them. So I'm, now I'm upset that that's where it is. <laughs> so now the what's next for us? We'd love to get some suggestions from you guys because we we've got to pick a lot of movies. We got what like fifty five movies left to watch. Yep. Um, so anything that you think that you is underrated that you want to throw into the mix, throw it on our Facebook page. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, help us out. Give us some suggestions. Steer us away from <laughs> the inevitable moment where we pick something so bad. There's got. We... There's gonna be a time because so far all the movies, like we watched Hell Night and we were like that was good. Yep. There's gonna be a time where we watch a movie <laughs> we look at each other and go that was bad. Oh yeah, there's gonna be a few times. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming. Um, but we actually the only one we've selected is we know coming next at 55. percent There's not many choices there. Some. Uh, some of the ratings of the percentage points, like at the fifty-four percent, there we we've got like thirty movies to pick from that that we think could possibly be good or watchable. Yeah, fifty-five percent is a bleak. <laughs> percentage. That's a weird. There's there's literally the only movies I saw in there were Orphan and Exorcist Three. So we're going with Exorcist Three. Yeah, um, that'll be our next. Because I like the Orphan. Yeah. So yeah, and and I haven't watched X of the Three in a long time, so we're headed there next. Yeah. But we don't know what we're watching after that, so throw us some suggestions. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know what you think, and, and uh, get, get ready for one of the most famous jump scares, I guess. Yeah, X of Three. <laughs> and until then, we'll try to stay sane. <laughs> we'll try to stay stay sane. You stay scary. Uh,